and welcome back to Beyond Territory. It's Doug again, and this one I am going to, well, this episode I'm going to carry on my build from my breach and add in the next bit of modular terrain that I hope will fit in nicely with my last piece. I've done some mini sketches, plans about what it's going to look like inside aerial view, what kind of expectation I have for what I'm going to try and construct. Two things, part of the spec is that this new bit of wall needs to connect to that bit of wall as a modular piece. Also need it to be coming out, not too far, probably to about here. For scale wise, that'll probably be all right. But of maths, I've got to think of angles, I've got to think of how far I want it to come out, how much space it's going to connect with and uh, playability really and what it would be like as a standalone piece. So I'm going to be using offcuts, bits I've got scrap and see what I can use. Um, I want it to fit in with the last bit so it's definitely going to have to be a bit of a wall connecting and then I've got oh, a bunch of other things, pieces. I'm going to start dry building it before I stick anything down start getting it measured out, worked out how it's got to be in line with the other fortification, how tall it is. So I'm going to have to do a bit of trimming and cutting for the bastion and see how it all fits in. <laughs> um, but at the moment, don't tell the missus, I've got the kitchen bread knife and that is really, really quite useful for cutting this lovely XPS foam. So what I'm going to do is a bit of trimming, get all my bits and pieces and before I stick it down I'll show you my puzzle pieces before making the next bit of terrain. All right so I've trimmed some pieces so to play with so I've got the connecting piece of wall and I've done a little bit of a tapered edge for the front of the bastion. I just need to trim again a return wall there. All right Getting the basic shape now, and what I do, I use bits of either toothpicks or dowel, and I sharpen one end if it's not there, and I use it just to pin in through and add a bit of extra support into the structure. And um, yeah, it really works, it really helps it hold it together. So uh, I've got the basic structure now completed in uh, XPS foam. And now it's a matter of cutting away where the battlements will be uh, and using my filler to fill in any cracks and uh, make good some areas. So I'll update you in a second. But here we go. We've got the area. All my little scrap pieces I'm piecing together. A set of stairs leading up to the bastion. OK, so I've focused on some of the battlements trimming away, tapering some of the edges. So I'm coming in with my smoothing. I think this is two prep, but polyfiller basically. And I'm gonna use a little bit of cardboard and actually I'm just gonna get my finger in. A dollar pen. And I'm gonna fill any cracks that I have on the surfaces tidy up any of the areas it's a good little cover up any mistakes that you weren't intending and even then great thing about polyfiller well, you can sand it afterwards so if i if i still find something that i'm not quite happy with i can let it dry i can sand it down and uh, improve it again Although it's the messiest bit, it's definitely my favourite bit, getting stuck in with the uh, poly filler. Uh, I just got to keep remembering to take my rings off or they get a bit messy and <laughs> it takes a bit longer to tidy up. But now I've got to employ a bit of patience and leave it to dry. So I've coated my castle, or redoubt now, in Mod Podge and it creates a nice barrier so when I'm painting it, it won't all soak into the, uh, the, the foam. Um, I've also made a couple of changes. I'll just turn it around for you. Put a little set of stairs up to the platform and a slope. So just with a grey paint, a nice base coat of 
spray all over the entire model. I'm going to come at it with some sands. I've just got my kids play sand that I'm going to use for the base. All right, for the wall, now that it's dried, I've got a bit of sand on it. Um, got the base coat's done and it's got a bit of strength to it with the Mod Podge. I'm going to start layering some colours on there. So I'm going to go for ochre browns and those kind of textures. And I might chuck in a bit of khaki as well. Okay, it's the first layer, kind of semi-wash. And then I'm going to go in with like a khaki colour. I'm using the same principle. What I'm going to do, because it's darker, I'm going to have it at the bottom. So you've got a lighter tone at the top. And I'll come in with a bit of ochre as well. And now I'm going to darken it up with a bit of grey stippled on the bottom. I'm also going to come in in the corner edges. And the battlements, just blend them together a little bit. See so the different shades of colour coming in together. I'm going to come in with a couple of dry brushes. First one, a greeny brown, and I'm going to focus on the top portion. And a slightly lighter dry brush, the yellow ochre, just on the tips of the battlements. Now I've got to come in with some PVA. So I'm using some play sand. I'm just going to sprinkle it on the uh, Armour Painter brown stuff. I can't remember the name of it. As I've managed to rip off the name of it, but it's brown, groundy, gr grainy stuff. Which is cool. And that combined with the fine sand gets a, a range of different textures on my dirt. So three is the magic number. Here's my third one. It's my lovely bit of cork. Put extra bigger stones in amongst my sand and my dirt. So I've been in two minds about this, but whilst the glue is drying for my, my gravels and my dirts, I'm going to build in some focal points, some detail into the brickwork. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to start putting in some brick textures and hope I don't mess up what I've been doing. Now, what I've noticed, obviously, I'm going to get a bit of the blue XPS coming through. So it would mean I have to go back a stage and put back in the Mod Podge into the areas and make sure that it's protected again. I've worked on some textures on my brick wall, created some brickwork and some um, damage damaged areas and I've done the same on the other side. What I need to do is just work on the bricks a bit. I've put a bit of Mod Podge on it as well. But I'm using my coffee stirrer stick and just make the edges of the bricks not so uniformed knife cut. A bit of indentation using a coffee stirrer stick. I should use a, any kind of tool. It's got a nice fine edge. I'm just going to come in with some Agra's Earth Shade. I've covered it in Mod Podge and then I've also done a grey undercoat in the areas. But I just wanted to put a bit of shade into the gaps. And I'll do that for all of them. Time for some flocking. I'm going with my burnt grass to, to begin with. It's really, really fine. I'm going to change up my flocking now to a slightly longer flock. More like a meadowy flock. It comes slightly longer lengths. I tend to put a little bit of a sprinkling with it in amongst the burnt grass. Just to give it a little bit of something else. Nearly there. I've uh, got some more of the detail in. I've put some flock in amongst the cracks in the wall. Um, changed some of the, the textures that are going in there and put a little bit more detail. And what I'm going to do 
let's add some of my little flock stickers and add a little bit of dried burnt grass and stuff within. So almost done for me anyway. I probably could keep like the last one. I could probably keep coming back to it and adding more and more into it. Um, but I suppose I'll find out more when I start playing with it and see how it works. But what I'm going to do, I picked up some of this stuff. Geek Gaming Scenics um, Terrain, basically sealant. I'm going to give it a big, big spray all over and hold everything in place. You guys like me probably have heard or listened to on YouTube, Luke, APS, and his uh, terrain building and his um, painting tutorials and all his little tricks and techniques, which are awesome. Um, and I got it from his online store and it came really quickly, really good service, um, lots of available different products and stuff. And I thought I'd just give it a test it out. And it's the first time I've used it, so I'll let you know how it goes. What I'll do, I'll take a few photos of it. I'll put some minis on there to give you a sense of scale. And I will go and get the other piece as well and take some pictures of it together so you can see it connected with the other part of the wall. So what I'll do, I'll give it a spin so you can have a look at it from all angles. I haven't got a spinner yet, so I need to get some sort of spinning plate. Make it a lot easier than trying to do it like this. But there you go, you can see a bit of the impact. Some of the moss growing, you can see the troops on the wall. And around the back, where I don't think I... I've got to get better at that, I keep on forgetting to show you the back of the build. Okay. So a little set of stairs and a slope to drag the cannons up into place. It's definitely been a fun, fun build and uh, I look forward to doing the next bit, see where it goes. I um, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you followed along and maybe had a go yourself or got a bit of inspiration for something of your own. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.